I printed, I had like a whole list of different talking points. I printed it, my printer started yelling at me. It printed page three of four. They were supposed to be double-sided. I was trying to save the trees and all that good stuff. They're not double-sided and this is the third page. I'm missing pages one through four. So we're just gonna go for it. It's gonna be fine. I'm, I'm gonna polish glasses. It's gonna be great. This is great. This is so meta. Welcome to my first live stream. As you can tell, it is going off without a hitch. Without a glitch, there is absolutely nothing wrong at all. This whole thing was supposed to be a joke. Like, this started as a, I don't wanna use those trigger words. I mean, let's just talk about good things. But like, this started as a, the world shut down for three years project and I was a live entertainer my whole life and I hated the idea of doing magic on video. For me, when you have this medium, this being the, the camera, the video camera. Okay, so this is some customer left these, it's fine. When you have something that, whether it's a deck of cards or, or some anachronistic analogous thing that exists and you're with people, you're in front of them and you're live and you do something that, that violates their reality, it creates this interesting moment. And I think there's three levels. I think there's puzzles, tricks, and magic moments. And I'm stealing this from a book called Magic and the Art of Showmanship by Henning Nelms, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But in that book, they talk about puzzles, so like bar puzzles, tricks, and magic moments. Bar puzzles are cool, and I'll show you one in a little bit that, actually, I might go get Francois. Should we go get Francois? I might go get Francois to show it to you because he'll do it better than I will. But a bar bet, like a proposition bet, is something that you can walk into a bar and be like, you know, I bet you I can do this. And then the person's like, you're on buddy. And then you proceed to do the thing that you told them that you can do. I'll show you one later. But one, one classic example that comes to mind is you have two shot glasses or two egg holders and you have a boiled egg or just a raw egg in one of the shot glasses or the egg holders. You know what I mean? Like, the, like when you're eating a hard boiled egg, just the, the little egg holder. The French have like a fancy word for it. I can't remember it right now, but you bet someone that you can get the egg from one shot glass into the other one and without touching the egg. And they're like, okay, you're on buster. And then you just blow between the egg and the rim of the shot glass or the egg holder. And that's really gonna bug me, the French word for it. I don't know, it's some some funny word. Anyway, you blow and that air, boop, and the air, the, the, the egg just, boop, just out. It's the technical term for it, into the other glass. So that's like a proposition bet. And then the, the person buys you a drink or gets you a shot or gives you 20 bucks or, you know, signs over their mortgage and their house to you. Bar bets, puzzles. And then there's magic tricks. And, and I made a living doing magic tricks. So I'm going to go into the chat. If you can just type out a playing card that's random, like uh, Francois has been muting audio. I guarantee you it was. Francois? I don't see him right now. He might be downstairs. I'm not sure where he is. Anyway, yeah, send me a playing card. I'm gonna try him. Yeah, that little bugger. I guarantee you it was him muting the audio. Anyway, so I was telling this story about how this whole thing started as a, a, a project during the time where the world shut down between 2020 and 2023. You know, the good old days. And and then we kind of cycled off into this into this story here. I promise you I will, I will circle back. I always circle back. It doesn't matter how tired or how all over the place I am. I'll, I'll get back to the point. And it's like conversations are like dinner plates of the Mandarin. You know what I mean? Like you go to the Mandarin, like the Chinese buffet, if you're in America, it's like, I feel like, do they have Mandarins in America? They must, they probably don't. It's a Canadian chain, Chinese buffet. And they've got these like plates that are floating on water. I think that's how it works. I don't know, or maybe it's like spring loaded. I don't understand plate technology, but you go up with a bunch of other people and you grab a plate and then the, this thing just rises like magically and you just take your plates. But sometimes you get a plate and it's dirty. So you like, awkwardly pick up the stack of plates, put your dirty plate into the middle, hoping nobody notices, and then just like take the next clean one. And I feel like conversations are like dinner plates at the Mandarin and full attribution for that little insight is to my friend Ariel Freilich from Toronto. He told me that back in the day, I laughed so hard and I just, I've, I've never stopped thinking about it. Four of hearts, you could have said five of hearts and had you said five, it would have counted five, two, three, four, five. I would have flipped over the next card. It would not have been the card. It would have not have been the, the five of hearts. So that's, that's like, you know, this performer that's obviously practiced something their whole life 
that they've manipulated somehow. Somehow I was able to move that card to the specific position at some point during my talks about the plates, or maybe I used editing technology or my green screen, Francois came up, snuck your card into the, the right position, and then I just carried on while he was doing it. Maybe, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a magic trick. And then there's magic moments. And I think through the years that I, I you know, that we all existed through that, that weird time. But, but I specifically just speaking to myself and about myself, it's all about me. Someone's going to edit that into a GIF one day and they're going to send it to all of my future partners. And it's going to suck because out of context, that audio bite is going to suck. Anyway, going back to the point during the pandemic, I'm just going to say it. Okay. YouTube don't give me like some weird strike just because I said one of your triggered buzzwords, but during the pandemic, I wanted to create magic moments and I didn't want to do magic tricks because magic tricks for me, for this like stock kit lens that I got on this, this Canon Rebel T5i, not sponsored, but you're welcome Canon that I'm using as a glorified webcam. I don't think that, that it was enough. I don't think that doing tricks was enough for me. It wasn't magic moments. And I was looking at all these content creators and I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, I, like these people, like, like this, this, this one guy, you know, I, I say guy, colleague, acquaintance. I've, I've met him a handful of times. His name is Peter McKinnon. If you don't know Peter, you go check out his channel, but Peter started as a, a magician and I think he was selling insurance at one point as well. And now he's a professional YouTuber and has been for years. And Peter has content all about filmmaking and photography, specifically, I think he started in the niche of photography, but now it's like filmmaking and videography and all that good stuff. I would watch Peter's videos. I would watch all these different YouTubers and creators. And then when TikTok started becoming a thing, I would just like get absorbed in the platform. And it was like, man, this is so cool. Like these people just, they just make videos and, and like I'm watching them. And it's some of these guys, some of these gals are like literally across the world from me, Europe, maybe even further. Some of them are Japan, China, and it's helping me or it's making me smile. And so that's how this channel was born. And I kind of took my foot off the accelerator when it came to Instagram and TikTok, and I just stayed here for the last little bit. So that, that was that. So I guess that's a big, long way of saying thank you for being here. And I know that this got off to this specific what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, just that's fine, man. I'll pick some up tomorrow. We're out of mint and it's mojito season. But just let me know. He's going to want overtime. It's fine. That was a big roundabout way of saying thank you for being here. This this live stream got off to a bumpy start. It's fine. And my commitment to myself and to you guys is doing more of this because I live for this. Like I love being in front of people live. And the only thing that I have a problem with being in front of people live is that you have to be there. And don't get me wrong, I will still in time hope to do more live shows and live audiences. But right now we have a little stream. I didn't pre-launch this. I didn't announce this. But we're going to do a taste, a test run, a taste run. Yes, a taste run. It's where you just run your taste across the bar and you just lick up all the delicious disgustingness. The, the, I'm just picturing like the peanut salt. I said peanut, the peanut salt from people dipping their fingers into a, a nut bowl. Please never eat the nuts in the bar. I don't think they even serve them in most bars in North America. Like I haven't seen a bowl of nuts, I think in like over a decade in a bar, whatever. But that's my commitment is Space and I were going to do a test run. I put up a post in the community tab and it had a Google form and I was like, hey, if you want to come check out like an unlisted live stream where I'm going to test all this technology and see how the bar looks on camera, see how this magical space magics, leave your email and, and come check us out. And not one person left their email and I realized, yeah, like why would they? I haven't been consistent with my uploading. I posted it like the day before we were going to do the test. And I started getting in my head about like, oh, nobody cares, nobody wants to watch, and all these like self-sabotaging beliefs, all of them are just balderdash. They're all crap. The reality is my job is to create as much value as possible for you, the audience, the Kazam crew. And I, I have nothing to sell you. I think the most powerful thing I can do, let me rewind. There was the, there was this, are you guys okay if I sit? Am I okay to sit? I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna keep my energy up. But in a minute, I'm gonna probably sit down with you guys because I just kind of want this, like, the door is closed, the sign is off, doors are locked, nobody drove through the bar yet. Oh, now that I've said it, I'm not gone wood. Now that I've said it, I'm kind of worried. I was listening to this podcast with Tim Ferriss and he was interviewing a novelist. 
and he asked the novelist one of the the kind of more standard questions they were kind of warming up but you know like what got you into writing or why did you become a writer the typical kind of interview question and the novelist's reply stuck with me i, I heard this in 2021 and I'll, I'll never forget this 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 will stay with me till the day i die he replied well you see tim i'm from tennessee and my mentor told me that being from Tennessee, I had two options, or I could become a storyteller. And he said to this novelist, but for God's sakes, don't become a preacher. The world's got enough preachers, become a storyteller. And so the guy became a novelist and that always stuck with me. And the only difference really between a preacher and a storyteller is consent, the way I think about it. So my job is to create stories, real and entertain. And that's what I'd like to do for you folks. We went live with no anticipation, no pre-launch, nothing. And there's people here and I'm so grateful because if I put everyone watching this stream right now into the room that I'm standing in, and one day, if you guys want, we'll do like a behind the scenes of where I film, but let's just say this space, I try my best to make it look a lot different for you here than I see out here. And for the behind the scenes stuff, I will, I'll throw up my socials on onto the, the stream later because I, I have it all set up. Space would be proud of me. I have like different scenes and I've got like this cool social media thing. You want me to do it? I'm gonna go do it. Push the button. Look, look, and I can still talk to you. Look at this scene I made. Isn't that cool? It's got like all the different like little things happening here. It's not perfect but it's like way out of whack. The timing's all off, but hey, it's fine. I did stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna post the behind the scenes of uh, on Instagram, but I think that's that. So I wanted to come out here, break the ice as it were, get over that hump, that fear of like, huh? I don't know what to do. I don't want to live stream because in all honesty, it's terrifying. This little thing that started kind of as a joke. I was making magic content, but I, I knew like from, from pretty early on that, that to come back to the very, very beginning of this live stream, puzzles, tricks, magic moments. The camera wasn't enough for me to create magic moments. And I, I think on my YouTube, if you go into like my oldest videos, I had this like little series I did called But Anyway. So I had this little series called But Anyway, and I did two episodes and it was like vlog style, but because I didn't get as many views as I thought I needed, you know, when I was thinking that vanity metrics mattered, I just stopped. And it's one of my biggest regrets, but I don't live with regrets and I'm not a regretful person. So what I will say is I'm here in front of you now. It took me some time to figure out what the heck it is that I was doing, but I think we found a path and it's going to be weird. Francois rides motorcycles. I ride motorcycles. In fact, his hat is right there. He's not here. I, I don't know. I don't smoke. He might, I don't know. He might still smoke. I feel like Francois, like, I don't know. He hides it because he gets embarrassed about it because he doesn't like talking about it. So to answer your question, I just saw it. Yeah, yeah you can smoke here. I, I don't care. The doors are locked. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah, his hat. I'm gonna go steal it for a second. But this this has been in every little skit that we've done. There is a Port Dover pin. It's a Friday the 13th pin, which is like a local really popular spot in Southern Ontario where in the height of summer, there will be thousands on thousands of bikers that gather at Port Dover. Port Dover is the name of the town and it's this cool, like it's right on the water, little beach town. And every Friday the 13th, bikers assemble. What is it? Transformers. I, I'm so bad at pop culture references. What is it? Transformers. Assemble? Is, is that what it is? Whatever. Correct me in the chat. I don't know. I spent my entire childhood listening to classical music and getting good at weird skills. There's a... Oh, this is a 36-inch wheel unicycle. I rode this to New York City when I was 18. Just weird, weird stuff. How do you get off this thing? Oh my god. If I die right now, that would be the most satisfying end to a career in performance I've ever had. I don't know how to dismount this in such tight quarters. I've never rode this behind the bar. I'm gonna try and get off of it and not hurt myself or break any bottles. Oh my God, this might be, okay. I, I'm usually like not bad at this, but going on like sleep deprivation is like, okay, scary. If I suck at references, this is why, okay? I ride this, I literally ride it daily in the summer. Sometimes once every three days, maybe once weekly, but usually it's daily. So please help me with the, the references, okay? Cause I like, I suck, like I did a thing with, with Francois and, and one of her regulars and 
in the title somewhere, I used BYOB and like, I've heard of System of a Down, but then all these people in the comments started going off about how they thought it was about a System of a Down song, which is I think the only reason, my hands are filthy from that tire. The only reason that the video might've had as much success as it did, not really the only reason, hopefully it was, you know, a decent video, but I had no idea that that was a System of a Down song. I'm really sorry, System of a Down. I, I genuinely do like your music. I'm just not an album person. I'm not like, a, oh, I can name every song from every band. Cause I'm just, whatever, I just, I have other other things going on, you know? Like I like to know how to ride a unicycle. So if I ever fail at pop culture references, Avengers roll out, is that it? Anyways. So the motorcycle thing was, here's some thoughts, okay? Go with me on this because you all, or if we were down in Texas, if Frank was here, y'all, Frank, what a guy. I hope he comes back soon, I miss that guy. If y'all want, you're gonna help me decide the future of this channel right now, right here, right now. I love shorts, let's push out the mold into this widescreen format because I love the widescreen. Let's do more long form videos. I think doing adventures, coming into work every day, I'm still gonna be at the bar. I would love to have these regularly, these little sessions where you guys can come in. Let's do them consistently. In the comments, let me know what day and what time you guys wanna show up and have these. I'm thinking we start with just once a week for now, cause it's like really easy for me to commit to, but whether it's Friday night, whether it's Saturday night, whether it's a little bit earlier, this is like a crazy, crazy late one because I was playing with OBS to try and make this work. But I would love to know if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff, if I should show up and do more of these, if I should just stay in shorts, or if you want me to just start throwing more content at you. I have a funny feeling. I almost said my friend and my dear producer, my dear friend and my producer is Space about this. His name is Space. Yeah, like Space. It's pretty cool. Do a channel that's like strictly for the magic and then do we, and it's like, just too much. I'm trying to understand my audience here. I'm going to be very honest with you. The core audience, people like yourselves who are here, some of you that have been here since the beginning and have stayed with me while I dredged through the inconsistency of technological unremarkability, i.e. Francois messing with me. Those of you who are actively engaged, telling me what time it is, what you're up to, dropping comments, listening and, and replying, that core community, that's what this is all about. That's what YouTube should be about. It's not. It's about an audience. And so thanks for being here. I'm not going anywhere. It just sounds like I'm ending the video. I'm not yet, but let me know what you want and I will do more of it. And if you have particular interests or questions, I will start answering them. And I'm an entrepreneur. So what you're looking at is one of my full-time incomes, and I guess full-time jobs. It is, it's, it's more than full-time. I mean, it's five in the morning. I slept four hours last night. And so I'm, I'm a little bit delirious right now. So forgive me, this live is gonna be very interesting to watch back, but that's one of my things. And then my other thing is I got into a property and I started a short-term rental business back in 2020, the end of 2020, took a little bit of a pause from it for the last like six to eight months, but just kind of pivoted back into the short-term rental space. And so I go from having this wonderful opportunity to be creative and meet people from all over the world and I'll go out and do stuff and people will say like, you're that guy that does those bar videos. And I'm humbled by that so much. It happened so many times now. And this, this isn't a braggadocious thing. It's, it's more of just like a general like awe thing that we doubt as creatives and as, as people, we, we tend to have a lot of self doubt. And I certainly do. My self doubt comes in the form of procrastination, self sabotage, paralysis by analysis, also known as information constipation. And I'm working tirelessly to get over that. And this was one of the things that I needed to do to get over that hump, that I don't know, you know, if it's a trauma response or if it's just laziness or if it's a lack of confidence. I think the lack of confidence comes from the lack of preparation, but also you can prepare as much as you want. I sat down to my main computer in the, in the back office here at the bar probably six hours ago. What time is it now? Four, five, 5 a.m. Yeah, I probably sat down at 10, 30 or 11. So yeah, six, six hours. And I prepared, I tried my best to prepare and now, you know, 4.15 a.m. hit, and at 4.12, I set the countdown timer in the in the OBS studio to three minutes, just to start rolling, I think it's at three minutes or whatever, but I think doing the thing is how we have the power. And so I'm happy to be your barman, and I invite you into the world of the barman, 
Welcome to the bar is very ironically named status quo because my entire life I've always tried to do the exact opposite of maintaining the status quo. Amongst my close friends I'm known as the pirate. Some know me as the magician or magic man. My little sister started calling me Kazam when we were about 13 or 14, maybe even younger. And so my friends and my family call me Kaz or Kazam. You can call me whatever you want. But this was a very long introduction video. My trusted companions, my 52 pasteboard friends, my friends here, the Kazam crew, thank you for being on this journey. And I'm not signing off. I'm not gonna leave. I wanna address some questions in the chat. I'm gonna go get Francois because we posted a short, I was gonna say earlier today, but I guess now it's, yesterday because it's almost been 24 hours even though it's been the same day bar life industry life you know how it is right until you sleep it's still yesterday it's still today we posted a short and it was all about being on time and that was something i wanted to talk about i recently noticed that francois was coming in late often and so i kind of called him out on it but i'm gonna go see if he can if he can show you guys a bar bag because earlier in the stream we were talking about proposition bets and i wanted him to show you one that kind of ties into the recent short but if you haven't seen the short please go check it out it helps me out always just getting your feedback, you watching stuff, engaging with it. It lets me know that, that this is all worth it. One of those little short videos, I'm getting better, but it still takes me like six to eight hours because like I, I do put a lot of work into them and like between just writing the scripts and doing some of the character stuff and, and just the editing, I'm not a very strong editor when it comes to speed. So they take me a while and it's, it's so silly because it's like a, a minute video, but like, you know, it's like a full work day for one video. So definitely just let me know like what you want to see more of and, and what you want. And this isn't me complaining. I'm just, I'm giving you the scope of the work because right now it's, it's team Kazam and the team is small right now, but we'll start to grow it. I recently had Curly come on as an editor to help me out. There was a little bit of a, a spike in, in the content creation. I want to get back to that point where I'm doing at least one a day, but it's it's tough for me because sometimes I just hit that that burnout on the creative side of, of even just the writing. So I need to just practice that and stay in it. And I consider myself an amateur at all of this. So thank you for being here as I learn and grow. Yeah, turns out Francois got a secondary gig for a watch repair store. So I thought it would be kind of apropos to show you a proposition bet that you can mess with people at a bar with. It's kind of a, it's kind of like a prop bet, but also a magic trick. It doubles as both. So I'm going to go see if I can find them, but I'm going to come back. Francois, wait, do you mind coming and doing that, that little, little prop bet we talked about for these guys? I know that you're probably busy, but there's no, there's no place to buy mint at this time of the morning, man. What are you doing? Anyways, I'm, I'm filling up the water cooler. Okay. Okay. He's filling up the, the water cooler. I'm going to go get Francois. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm delirious right now. Hopefully he's awake. What are you doing, man? I just told you. Okay. And you just, that's how you don't. Yeah, no, that's fine. That, that looks right. And the air pocket comes out through here. Yeah, so, the, yeah, because that's why they make that gurgle, gurgle sound. The gurgle, gurgle. Okay, can you just, yeah, it's fine. Just leave that. They're, they're, yeah, there's people waiting and they're really nice and like they're saying kind things. Okay, just leave that. You don't have to tie your bow tie, man. Do I want to tie it? Just go. Oh, bonjour. There's so many people, huh? I'm going to read some of these comments, huh? Now, maybe, maybe you will, uh, the barman is, uh, you know, it's funny, I don't know his name. In every every shift we do, it's like he never actually mentions his name, huh? It's, it's kind of tricky. But anyway, so he asked me to do a proposition bet or like a, like a magic trick for you based on the recent short. So he, I, I think I, I will perform, I will perform the, the, the bet first, the trick, and after this, I will explain it. Yes? Okay, but for this, you need a stylo for my French francophone friends. And you bet someone that you can use static electricity from the bar or your hair to make the, the pen stick to your hand. Your hand, hand, yeah, 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 hand. So you can rub over here on your hat and you bet them that you can make a stick like this without glue to your hand. Stick so hard that you can shake your hand vigorously. I gotta be careful when I do this, huh? Because on YouTube, they will give us a copyright strike. It's okay, it's okay. I won't do it again because it looks funny. <laughs> It looks good. Okay, you shake hand, you, the, the hand vigorously and the, the stylo won't fall off, the pen won't fall off. And people, they, they can examine your hand, they can look, they can see, do you have glue, do you have some kind of adhesive or anything like that, you know, no. and they can examine this. You can borrow the, the, the stylo, it doesn't matter. And you bet them that you can shake vigorously your hand and the, the, the pen won't fall. 
aesthetics. Now the reason is, it's so simple, but don't discount the simplicity for the effect because obviously don't show them this, huh? But if you take a pencil or another pen and you stick it under your watch, you need to wear a watch. So if you wear a watch, it's perfect. You have this wonderful moment where they, this, you keep your hand to the back and you just, I'm just relaxing the pen and it just stays there. I just relax and it just stays and you can shake, shake vigorously. And from this side, it's, it's a really cool illusion because you can just pull it this way or even this way. You can hand that to them. Being careful not to show them this obviously, but you can, you can hand that like this or you can hand it like this. Being careful not to show underneath here. Hand them this. And when they are looking at the pen trying to figure it out, you relax your hands, you relax and you just pull out, boop. You drop it on your lap or you put it in your pocket or if you're sitting in a restaurant, it works really well. But this is a little proposition, but kind of mixed with a magic trick that ties into the short that we just made. I hope you like it. I need to go figure out this water cooler because on effet, I think <laughs> he's trying to reconnect it, but uh, you need to push it hard, tilt it hard up like this. Wait, that's good. Okay, man, I'm just, I'm gonna let you do it because I, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, it's okay, I got it. No problem. You go entertain the masses. Okay, you sure? Wait, wait, blah, blah, blah. Okay, crazy. I don't even understand. A little joker. He's, he's been working on stealing watches. He stole someone's watch at the bar the other day. It was really impressive. But he just put a watch on. I've heard of people stealing watches. I didn't realize you could put watches on. Can you do that thing? Oh, that, man. I love when, when like, the, the watch stealing thing is so cool. Like, can you do that thing where you just take the watch off, like, like, fast off my wrist like that yeah 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 yeah. that's awesome man crazy he just put it on my wrist too that's nuts anyway thanks buddy but huh yeah, that's crazy i don't even feel him do that wild so there you go there's a little prop bet a little magic trick that you can do for people if you wear a watch and if you don't don't just start wearing one and then like do a thing because people would be like why are you wearing that watch and then it gets all suspicious but if you do wear like jewelry that's tight enough to, to pull that off it's a it's a great it's like a simple magic trick every magic trick is simple but i think the Ingenuity lies in the simplicity. I'm going to hit some Q&A in the chats. I know there was more. I hope you can see this. I don't have a monitor, but there's a unicycle tire track on this fine piece of paper that had my notes for the live stream. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just rewind to probably about to the midway point of this video where a 36 inch wheel unicycle came into play because that happened. Explain the idea of starting a motorcycle vlog and why you think it would be exciting. We covered that, let me know. Should we do some, some motorcycle vlog stuff? I think that'd be really cool. Like my ride into work every day, question mark, random adventures, might be kind of neat. Let me know your thoughts if you'd be interested in something like that. Just funny commentary and life thoughts, kind of something like this. It just, it probably wouldn't be live. It would just be recorded in the moment, but I, I probably wouldn't edit too, too much. And I'd try to be interesting and, and funny. Hopefully at least one of those two things, maybe educational and funny. Hopefully both at the same time. Whew. Wow! Introduce a simple magic trick that viewers can learn and perform themselves. Yeah, we did that. We did all this. Great. Oh, oh, and being on time is a skill. So I was watching a video from uh, Alex and Layla are such a cool power couple and they make content all about businesses and growing businesses and all that stuff. Anyways, without going too deep into that rabbit hole, Layla shared this great little reel I think I saw it on Instagram about being on time is a skill. And I realized that I, I'm, I'm usually on pirate time. And what I mean by that is that the Greeks had three different gods for time. They had Kronos, Kairos, and Aeon. Kronos, chronology, chronological order. It's like the relentless march towards the inevitable end. You're born, you live, tick tock. Not the app, like, like a clock or like a, a watch. Kronos, that was the one god. Very, very lateral, very like lots of direction, very focused, very stringent, very good for deadlines, for kind of, you know, the birth of an idea, the execution of an idea, the death of an idea. It's just all very linear. I'm not getting into Aeon today because my, as you can tell by my speaking today, I, I don't think I have the brain capacity, but Kairos was an interesting god, an interesting way to perceive time. And Kairos was, serendipitous time it was the time between time and so i exist in kairos i'm always always in kairos time and i've realized that i must get better at respecting chronos chronos being the idea that i need to be able to plan for the future i need to be able to understand that i can better serve 
my audience, wonderful people like you, by becoming better at chronos time, at being better with deadlines, being better at keeping myself accountable with the TikTok, TikTok, tick, because I tend to just kind of flow and fly and swagger through life like the humble pirate that I am. But chronos has a worthiness to it. And the last short was explaining to Francois that sometimes it's good to be on time because otherwise consequences come. And so the video from Layla, I really like the reframe she provided, which was being on time is a skill. Some people have the skill and some people don't. And so next time, if you're one of those people that's like very organized and very chronos in their time, and you meet someone like me who's just very Kairos, don't be stressed or annoyed or upset. It's never anything personal. It's usually just because we haven't taken the time to develop the skill. And so we're in Kairos time, but I'm getting better at chronos and I've noticed that in my life, when there are things that I'm really excited for and that mean a lot to me personally, and that will help my development and my growth. And when I make that silent commitment with myself, when I deeply unconsciously know that that thing that I'm going to do is going to grow the entire tree, the entire planet, the entire world, that I'm always good at chronos and respecting the timeline. So just something to think about take away from this weird little hour and three minutes we've spent together. I'm going to jump in to do some Q&A. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what kind of content you want to see. Let's, let's break it down to three things. So what day and time, if you can drop the, if you don't know what the time is in, in Eastern Standard Time, can you just drop your time zone in your reply? So if you're saying 10 a.m., just let me know that that's 10 a.m., whatever your local time zone is. So if you're in Europe, let me know if you're, you know, GMT, Pacific Central, whatever, whatever. I'm over explaining things because I'm just kind of not here right now. I should be asleep, so forgive me. Number two is, it's so funny. I meant to, I was like, ah, I need to grab water before I start this because dehydration leads to brain farts. It's a thing. I'm, I'm testing the reality and proving the reality of that fact. If you're ever stuck, drink some water. I don't have any water here and I don't wanna leave camera again because you've been way too kind with your patience for me today. But what day and time for the live streams? Once a week, I might make a Google form, so keep an eye out on the community tabs, but I'd rather just read your comments. Just get a, like a basic feel, drop that for me, which you're already doing, so thank you. Someone just said they thoroughly enjoy motorcycle vlogs, so let's tie that right into the next question, which is what kind of content would you enjoy? I'm definitely gonna keep making these bartender like comedic shorts. I think the channel is meant to be comedic. Like this whole thing, like, let's not take ourselves too seriously. You know what I mean? There's an empty bottle of Ray and Nephew that I flip and I twirl and I stall and I do things with. I'm like no flare bartender, but it's sitting here beside a glass that I was polishing earlier on, beside a unicycle that I was riding earlier on. There is no reason to take ourselves too seriously. So I'm thinking, okay, it's an entertainment channel. It's a variety channel, great. But every single time I go into this like rabbit hole of researching YouTube tools, tricks and techniques to grow, it's always like double down on your niche, get consistent in your niche, 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 niche. And like, I'm pretty sure in French, niche means nest. Don't quote me on that. But if someone wants to check that real quick, let me know. Like, what's your nest? Like every time I hear like, oh, what's your niche? Like, I don't know, like my niche is me. It's the fact that it's me and Francois and Frank and Mercedes and status quo and like weird fire breathing stuff and unicycles and motorcycles and cool people and fun. I think I just answered my own question. But let me know what kind of content you want to see. And if you have specific questions about bartending, or if some of you want to become bartenders, that career path served me for years and years. And it was amazing. So if I can help any of you go down a road that will serve you and help you. Uh, bartending is one of those weird things where you don't need any official training or degrees, at least in Ontario, I'll say any official training minus like maybe the, the smart serve, which is like, or don't even get me started, but it's, it's basically like the government's way of, of trying to enable people to serve alcohol in a smarter and more responsible way. And for the most part, it works on paper. It's kind of like communism. Smart serve is kind of like communism. That's, that's my hot take. It's a, you know, great idea on, on paper. Bartending is one of those careers that can give you absolutely everything, but it can also rip everything away. If I can help you with the first part and help you avoid the second part, cheers. Salute. Schlanche. Nazdrovia. I'm gonna stop. Prost. Okay, I'm done. That's question number two. So what kind of content? Whether it's, or maybe you just wanna make 
cocktails at home, whatever. Fun fact for you, I don't drink right now. I'm not one of those people that's like, I've been sober for this many years. No, I just, I'm just not drinking right now. It's been a while but it's like a health thing, mental and physical. Love talking about it. I will always love, my dad was a chemical engineer and a radio jockey. I think thus the voice, but also my obsession with like alchemy and chemistry and magic. You're listening to 102.1, The Edge. I never met my dad. So I think, you know, we can, go, we can dive into that in a, in a future video. But I think that that mystery is what kind of created my, that little spark of curiosity for why I became who I became and why I'm obsessed with the things I'm obsessed with. But just because I may not indulge with you all, I'm more than happy to talk about, mix up, concoct for us. Why not? And low key, that kind of ties into like a long, not long life, but like a lifelong, long life. Yes, a long life goal, a lifelong goal. One, two, three. So what kind of content? The shorts, I think the shorts will keep comedic and fun. The long form, I'll, I'll definitely want to play around with like longer form skits. And I would love to introduce like some, some educational stuff, you know, some like deeper content too, like uh, still fun and like light, but maybe with a serious undertone and some more like gravitas. Good word, gravitas. And then number three, questions and answers. I'm gonna dedicate another five minutes to this live because I've gone on far too long, but I appreciate you being here, genuinely. And let's do it again. This was fun. It's crazy not having like vocal reactions. Like I'm so used to the crowd with like either applause or like shouting things out or hecklers like doing stand up or magic or whatever. But yeah, whatever you'd like. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump into the comments right now. I'm going to quickly go into my little app. I use this app for productivity called TikTok and I love it. Oh my God, I wish I was sponsored by them. Maybe I should reach out to these guys. It's like so cool. They have like an Eisenhower matrix capability. I'll get into this in another video if you want. I gotta make a video about it some other time. I'm just like nerding out about my app, but here we go. Okay, content. Where are we here? Space, I need ya. My producer Space, he is not with me today. He will be soon. He will keep me organized. Okay, here we go. Tick, tick with a list of stuff. Just making sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, so question and answers, tease upcoming videos. Yeah, yeah, so I, I did a, a motorcycle vlog test today with uh, this like little cheapy Walmart camera I had, but like tomorrow I'm just gonna go to the store and see and, and actually pick up like a GoPro and like an Insta 360 and like, like play around with it and like decide on do I need this or like what are we doing here? I have a drone got this funky little thing. I shoot all of my videos with this, by the way. So if any of you are debating creating content and you just haven't yet, please, please just start. The device that you need to do it sits in your pocket daily. That's it. So questions and answers. I'm going to stop talking soon enough. I'm going to jump over there. I have this great outro song that my producer Space told me about this AI website that generates sound. So every sound and music thing that you'll hear on our live streams is going to be probably either a local artist, friend, musician, or AI. And right now it's AI just because the speed with which the ideas are happening here and I wanna execute, just start going through. But I will always disclose what is a local artist and, and what is AI. But the stuff that you'll hear tonight is, is AI. I'm gonna play a little outro song and I'm going to riff to just some of the, the comments as I read them back while the song plays. But uh, there we go. So what day and time, what kind of content and question and answers. So also the cool name. I hope, I don't think I did. That's just your name. That's a cool freaking name. I dig it. Thank you for being so attentive and like interacting so much today. You like status quo as the, as the bar name. So, so good. Was the solar eclipse video awkward to make? Yeah, it was. And you know what? Good catch because my friend Kyle actually called me out on it and he's like, Dude, it's like with editing, we probably could have made that video funnier. Kyle's like a master producer and editor and, and just brilliant, brilliant technical genius. Kyle's been a lighting and sound tech, like an AV technician for live theater and live shows for over a decade now. And a long, long, long standing, long time, long term friend. He's actually, and Kyle's putting together almost like a mini doc using footage from the show that was live in front of an audience mixed with b-roll mixed with interview content that we shot and i'm really really hyped about it anyway kyle told me about the eclipse video he's like we could have made that a lot punchier and a lot funnier with editing but it came off as kind of annoying and not your brand and i was like damn like you know you have those people around you that are like Oh yeah, that was great. That was awesome. Like, like those friends are really important. You know, those friends are great. People that are supportive and positive are always welcome. There is a very few can count them on less than 
the fingers of this hand, amount of people that I trust with their opinions when it comes to my work, my work being anything like this, anything creative. I would say even my, my business, my, my other business. And Kyle is one of them. And he was right. So I think the, the very concept was kind of abasing. It was like me making fun of American tourists. I mean, A, sometimes tourists in Niagara Falls, I'm in Niagara Falls, Ontario, most of the time, unless I'm not, in which case I'm wherever I am and not in Niagara Falls. But sometimes the tourists get really annoying. So I think it was part like trying to satirize and make satire about it. But even with the bar stuff, like a lot of it started as satire. It was meant to just be like, Haha, ha, this is funny because this happens and it's true. And people started getting like, really upset, which is great because I think, I think more of us could use moments to be upset and offended. I always ask myself if I get upset or offended, like why? Why did I just get upset or offended? And it causes me to have a deeper conversation with myself. And then usually I learn something about myself. And if I don't learn anything, I can just write off whatever upset or offended me and go, wow, I really disagree with that person's views, opinions, methodology, philosophy, whatever. I'm just not gonna interact or engage with them anymore because I find that to be either offensive or whatever, for whatever reason. But the reality is like, man, we live in a time now where like everyone's like cancel culture. Like, okay, cool. Like I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Some of us get caught. Others don't. That's the only difference. So we can all come on here and posture and pretend, right? But like, we're not perfect. And I think my mission and my real way to make content is stuff that inspires others, lifts others up, brings everyone up and is positive. And satire is powerful, but I need to be careful with like, there's, I think there's a line there. So it was awkward, but I think it was awkward because it didn't align with A, my vision for this universe, this like Kazam universe, this status quo as it were, but also awkward because I freaking hate talking to cops, if I'm being dead honest. I just, I can't stand police officers for multiple reasons. I respect them as individuals. I have a problem with them as an entity, more often than not. So I think there was some awkwardness there because like, you know, I'm clearly having fun. It was hours after the eclipse. We're just kind of taking the piss out of it. There was a state of emergency. It was like, Niagara Falls is calling for over a million visitors. Like, it was like, you know, stock up on toilet paper all over again. It was like road closures and like rolling the tanks and all this like hype. And it created a, a dramatic like spike in tourism. But on the day of, I was kind of taken aback by some of my interactions with cops and that, that was awkward because like he, you know it, i just it was like hook line and sinker he was just he was just answering my questions as though i was completely serious and i was playing it kind of straight even though i was playing goofy it was just so weird but yeah awkward sorry for going off about the police i mean you know no disrespect to any of you if you guys are, are actually cops again as individuals no problems but uh, whatever guess we discovered something about myself today i like these lives we can dive into stuff that actually matters imagine i just lost all my viewers it'd be great I'm kidding i don't want to lose you <laughs> thanks for being I'm so weird. I'm delirious. Stopping by to say I love your content and your vibe. I'm Brian Untamed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Be what you are. Do what you do. You have enough charisma to keep us here. Whatever you talk about. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. And what else? Bartender stories are my favorite. I can send you mine as they come in. I manage a movie theater with a huge bar. Kickstart Films. Let's go. Get me on Instagram or email me. I don't even know what my email is right now, but it's it's probably like alex at the I'll, I'll just, you know what? Why don't, why don't we just use, just, just make it like, like, Bar stories at the kazam.com. Just send it there. It'll work. It'll be fine. Bar stories at the kazam.com. Send it to me. I would love that. Send me as many as you want because I will make riffs on it. We'll make shorts out of it. It'll be great. Sundays, I can do nighttime best 4 p.m. Eastern. I went at 2 p.m. Arizona time. Okay, so like Sunday evenings, that'll be a lot better for my sleep health. Bar etiquette. Cool. Wholesome customers. Ever seen a date go amazing? Such horrifying. And long skates can also break down into shorts really slowly and then as a compilation. Great points. You guys are making some great points. I'm going to go through these like more cool. Uh, secretly a cop. <laughs> Love that. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go drink some water and then leave. I, was, I think Frost already left. I think he left through the back door. I'm going to go to the front door. I'm going to lock up. Make sure I lock up because last time I forgot and I left the door open, which is why most of these liquor bottles are now empty. It is what it is. I'm going to play this outro song to be all professional. The lyrics are great. Play an outro song and I'll probably leave my microphone on while the outro plays. I'm bidding you a wonderful night. Stay magical. Thanks for being here, guys. You rock. I seriously appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Okay, I'm leaving for real. Thanks for watching. The bar is closed. Did I point to the right side? I don't know. I'll find out later. Okay, see you guys.
Alex Kazam brought the fun tonight.